threatening the stability of the country as you must know. Remember the walk to work. Moreover, the country was in the midst of national campaigns leading to the 2006 national election. The insurgency in northern Uganda was coming to an end, and the disarmament exercise in Karamoja was in its final stages, demanding restoration of police and policing in northern and northeastern parts of the country. I want to thank the, the former IGP, uh, Odwe, who we agreed he, he was then my deputy, to really uh, preside over the restoration of policing in northern Uganda and in the and 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 and, and, and Chiyagu Manawe in Karamoja. Uh, although when he left, he has not been saying good things about me. But, but, but we, we actually work together very well. I, I hope I meet him and we, now that I'm, I'm out of it, maybe you can say, but we do a good team. Because he did a good job. And uh, when he started talking against me, I said, no, let me keep quiet about the good things. But I think because I'm an intellectually honest, I think it's put, important to put it on record that he did a good job. And when he, he left by his, himself, nobody really forced him out. So that record should also again be not be missed. In addition, uh, then we, we, the, the country was also in pre preparations for hosting Choga 2007. They were in high gear. And here I also want to make, pay tribute to uh, AIGP Francis Ruego and Brigadier General Sabit because they were the key in terms of security. They really were the key uh, officers who were, uh, who were in, the, in, in the league representing SFC, we are representing police. Uh, <coughs> so that's, that, that, was, that was the circumstance in which I took over. In spite of the, the challenges I've raised, which were presented by these circumstances, another challenge that played out during my tenure, in particular, spikes in violent criminality, which from time to time happened in the different parts of the country. I'm gratified to report that broadly, the, the crime situation, as I hand over, continues to be on a downward trend from 2006 to date. And in the, in the handover report, we actually have, uh, have, uh, the, we have uh, a graph showing from 2005, when it was going up, up to 2006, from 2006, then it starts coming down uh, until today. Last, this, this 2017 is all. There was slight increase. There was slight increase in, in crime. I'm sure the, the, the crime intelligence will uh, issue the IGP will issue the annual crime report, and that will come out. But the, the most important thing is that during my tenure, crime came down, and that one again you cannot you cannot rub it from my record. <laughs> you, you can't. It's there. Uh, the other, three, of course, as I, we had. Uh, I would go into the details of the various threats, but I think in the interest of time, uh, and in any case, we have documented all this in our, in our, in our, in our, in our, in our report. And sir, uh, you, you will have time to, 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 to read it and appreciate it. And of course, uh, the, the, the new command, uh, we use it as a reference. Uh, Again, in the, during my tenure, we really undertook an ambitious program of building capacity and capabilities of the EPF. Uh, and, uh, and again, the details are there. I will not, uh, I'm not really go into them. The most important thing is that really we, we are on the right road of, in spite of the few, of the few numbers, we are in the right road of, of really building a modern and uh, a modern and a uh, uh, professional force, which I'm sure the new command definitely will, 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 will add on with their competence. Uh, the, the, the strategy as far as, uh, as you, you guided us, the chief guided us, is uh, while stopping further recruitment because of budgetary considerations, was that we use our, our force optimally, but also optimize on what you call force multiplier. That is mobilization of the, of the population. I remember he, he is the one who coined the lookout teams. 
in the villages. The lookout teams in Mayumba Kumi uh, using crime preventers, then also technology. And I'm really excited that we are moving very well in that direction. The CCTV project is on course, and uh, another, another project, uh, the, 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 our flagship project of the Forensic Center of Excellence, I'm happy to hear that it's on course. I'm really, very, very, I'm going to sleep very nicely tonight, because I've heard that it's at long last it's, it's going to begin. Uh, we, again, all the details are, are here. I will not again bother you. We have big budgetary problems, sir. In spite of the demands of the police, over time, the, the, the budgets are cut. Yes, we appreciate that uh, the, there has been an increase of, since during my tenure, of 525 percent in the budget allocation. And we want to thank the, the president, yourself, uh, and cabinet for this consideration. Moving from 86.4 billion in 2006, seven financial year, to 540 billion 2015-2016. This looks big, but it's not. It's not because half of it goes into salaries and the uh, big proportion goes into capital development. That's how we have acquired uh, our, 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 our equipment, and, but very little for operational needs, like feeding, fuel. We have a huge fleet, we can manage it. And that, that time during the police council, sir, again, I, I reported to you, uh, and uh, you promised to handle it. Because uh, we have, we have got a big, big, big uh, accumulated bill. Infrastructure development, we have tried with the little we have. Uh, and they did quite a commendable job again. The, since 2005, the number of uh, police stations, police products in the north and northeast up to, up to actually Tororo and Utalegia uh, are, are, are complete and they, they are being occupied. Many times they don't, uh, uh, they are not focused on, so people don't know that all, all these things have been going on. Uh, we, we, have the, we, have, uh, we have just completed. Thanks again. I want to commend our construction unit and Vangirana, uh, AIGP Vangirana. I'd hope that I would, would commission it. Before I go back. But I hope you allow me to at least go and peep. <laughs> because I also played the hand. Yeah. I, this morning I passed, oh, it's really amazing. Uh, we had thought we would give him that. I remember someone you visited, you, you quoted a very nice one. That from ashes, you, you, quote, you quote, quote, I think quoted from the Bible, from ashes shall emerge magnificence. And oh God, what a magnificence. <laughs> So I'll be going there also to people and, see, and feel happy in my mind, in myself that I, I played a small role in that. Of course, we have this, uh, we have this uh, hospital, mini hospital. Uh, thanks to the support of uh, of the government of Iran. Then we have the cancer diagnostic center, which uh, is uh, also in the course of, con of completion. Then my project here. I hope it will not die. The construction of 1,020 uh, apartments, and I had made myself I had volunteered to be a site engineer. <laughs> and uh, but I'm sure that the, the new command will ensure that it is completed because that's really the beginning of solving the accommodation problem, especially in Kampala. It's, the, I'm, 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 it's unfortunate that uh, here we not pay attention to it, but we thought. We, we should focus on building the operational capacity of the force. Then, then welfare will come. And uh, uh, I believe we were right. This is now the time to address the welfare problems, starting with accommodation uh, uh, issues, especially in Kampala, because we need over 10,000 apartments. Uh, again, all the details of what we have achieved is here. Then equipment, we have acquired incredible equipment for general policing and uh, and, uh, and uh, specialized policing. I'm excited to that uh, I came in when we had a police wing without wings. Uh, but now I have left when the police wing now has wings, it can fly. And uh, again, 
I, I believe tomorrow the, the, our base in, in Jinja uh, is going to be the, the construction of the, of, our, of the the air base for the air wing in Jinja is going to be commissioned tomorrow. Again, so here it's, it's very, very, I'm, 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 I'm gratified with that. Well, there are many initiatives that we started, we, we, we started and in fact, sir, as we, as we were in the police council, one of our resolutions uh, was to, to create a directorate of construction and production to so, yeah, drive, uh, drive this these projects which are ultimately are meant to solve the welfare problems without depending on the <coughs> consolidated fund. Using good policies which with the land, with, with the initiatives we started. So, and we have, we have, we have we are in advanced stages with public service to, to, to trade off some directories uh, and then so that we can create this new directorate. So I hope that the new leadership leadership will, 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 will take it up. Uh, maybe of course you have your own ideas, but I, I think it's a good it's a good thing to be self aware. That's the, that's how others have solved their problem. There are ongoing pro projects and uh, and planned projects. They are here. Again, so I will not really bother the, the meeting. To during my time, we. We strengthened police police cooperation, regional and international cooperation. We elevated the what used to, what they call the NCB to refresh the directorate of Interpol. Uh, we <coughs> I'm proud to have been one of the founders of Afripo, and as a consequence, Uganda was voted uh, to be the first vice president. But the, the, our coordinate was given a coordinate without. A police, a coordinated wide uh, police coordination. Of course, I'm the current chair of Yapco. Uganda is the current chair of Yapco, and the IGP is going to, of course, uh, have a, the job of running around all these countries. <laughs> but again, at the time when we had brought, brought in the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, then bilateral corporations, we have got a bilateral cooperation with a number of countries, we have outlined them here. I want to thank and congratulate Mr. Yago Manawe for his leadership in the peace support and peacekeeping operations. We, as a consequence, we have even generated a revenue stream, which I think you can really build on because it's a source of, and apart from, of course, contributing, carrying out our obligations. Uh, of, uh, we have challenges again, which I will not again. Yeah, brother, you with, uh, which again is in the, in, in the report. I want to conclude uh, by saying this: that I leave the force after 12 plus years of intense activity with a lot of optimism, optimism, and confidence in the future of our country. I thank the command and staff of the police for your efforts. We are a team, uh, and I really want to apologize if there is anybody I stepped on. Please, I'm sorry. What I made was for the good of the country. It was not that I had any personal problems with anybody. I've never, I've never had that. I want to thank the constables and our civilian staff who have continued to work in very difficult conditions to keep our country safe and secure. Just to advise them to be disciplined. I think that's really the biggest challenge I need. Uh, I remember the DIG who had uh, agreed, I, I gave him that assignment of that he really handles the discipline. Now that he's the IGP, I hope to, now you will even bite more. Um, the civilian staff who have been serving us tea, almost uh, we take you for granted. Those who have been sweeping the sweeping our, our, our floors, keeping them neat, as you can see, very, very neat building. I thank you very much. I thank the Honourable Minister of Internal Affairs, sir. I thank you for your leadership and guidance and the support, especially on the floor of Parliament. I thank the Honourable Minister of State for Internal Affairs, Honourable Biga Kanya. I know how the headache we have always given you. <laughs> I hope the situation will be better with the new leadership. Uh, 
because somehow I, tr I attract controversy. So now that I'm out of the way, I hope you won't have the headache that you have always been having. I thank you both for always giving me, encouraging me in the face of the difficulties. By the same token, I thank all successive honorable on on ministers and ministers of state of internal affairs, beginning with the now uh, Prime, our Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Dr. Rohakana Rugunda, who last night called me and expressed his solidarity and encouragement. I thank the Permanent Secretary and the Minister of Internal Affairs staff for your support. Whenever we have come to you, you have supported us. I appreciate the support of Sister Security Forces who have worked closely. I'm very proud that in my time we enhanced this cooperation institutionally by establishing the JOC. We only had a JIC, but now we have a JOC. We have even a headquarter here. The, the, the job which meets and in the regions and districts actually does a fantastic job of, of, of putting our efforts together. I thank the Chief Justice who is the chair of the general sector institution. Uh, the support you give us including funding and I want to again uh, pay tribute to Chom, the Director of Research and Planning with Ochaya and Rutalo. I must mention very, very hard, quiet, very hard working, who have coordinated us with the Gyros uh, institution. I place some special tribute to the right honorable speaker of parliament and the members of parliament for their support and understanding and really pushing for resources uh, during my tenure. <coughs> I will be eternally indebted to the people of Uganda and in particular the volunteer youth, especially the intellectual youth from the universities who formed a network of crime preventers. We had crime preventers from 1989. But these youth, when they came in 2014, really they moved to another level. In spite of the misunderstanding and the fact, it was a revolutionary action on their part, uh, they have really done a lot. Uh, and uh, there is no doubt that they have been a force multiplier to the police in the fight against criminality in Uganda, especially given that we have got small numbers. I was saying the other day that when I, when I retire, I, I will be a crime preventer. Little did I know that it would come very quick. <laughs> and, and actually, I'm serious with you. So, IGP, I want to, to request you, really, to do, that I'm a crime preventer. Use me <laughs> as a crime preventer. Every Saturday, I'm mobilizing my, in my village, my, my, the, 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 the chairman, LC1. I said I'm available, sir. Above all, I will be forever indebted to H.E. the President and Commander in Chief for his trust and confidence, <laughs> and particularly to have entrusted me with such a responsibility, during which time he, pro he promoted me to Major General, then Lieutenant General, now to Full General. <laughs> this is not a small achievement, my friends. So, uh, sir, through you, uh, I want to thank the President. Uh, I want to, to, to express, I'm, 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 uh, as you know, I'm a loyal soldier of UPDF. I'm a loyal cadre in the struggle to transform our country. And that's what I will remain. I thank all of you. The struggle continues. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Dr. Moro, you to this country. Honorable <laughs> Minister, I should begin by thanking you, His Excellency, the President, for my appointment as Inspector General of Police, and I promise to serve the best of my interests. I have put my remarks in writing to avoid distortion by the media and the press. <laughs> I take this opportunity to thank the outgoing Inspector General of Police, General Kale Kaibura, for the transformational role he has played as the IGP for the past 12 years. Thank you very much, sir. I take this opportunity to congratulate Brigadier yes, Sabit Mose upon his appointment as the deputy IGP. I welcome you warmly, DIG, to the Uganda Police. Sir, uh, let me conclude by urging the directors and all police officers to accord me and the new deputy IGP the use of GDN cooperation. I pray that you continue giving us, sir, your guidance to enable us to fulfill our mandate. As I said earlier, I will be interacting with the media in a more detailed way in due course. I thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Shall I now invite the Under Secretary to give us the comments of this? Thank you. Do it later, since he's representing the PS. Yes, sir. The Minister of Internal Affairs, Minister of State for Internal Affairs, the outgoing IGP, General Kare Saibura, the incoming IGP, John Martin Zapoza Chora, the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Brigadier General Sabiti Mujeni Muzei, the representative of the PS Minister of Internal Affairs, fellow senior officers, the media, ladies and gentlemen. I'm extremely pleased to have been chosen this morning by the incoming IGP to move a vote of thanks to the outgoing IGP. First and foremost, I told you, I told, toyed with the idea of speaking of CAF since I wanted to speak from the heart. Later, I realized that you, Jeno Karekayo, one day you told me, Kasinje, start writing your police memoirs. Uh, you remember, sir? You have a better memory. <laughs> <laughs> and you added on, they will benefit future generations. Actually, I did the following day, unknown to you. A young man at Makere University School of Languages is a lecturer, is helping me with this project for some time. When I called him this morning, he reminded me Kasinja, put it, put your thoughts on paper to enrich the chapter I have been developing since you joined on 10th of November 2005. That day was not a day like others. First, 
Angelo Katomba Wamara was leaving us. Secondly, I was joining on that very day a new rank of commission of police, if some of you remember, that very day, for the first time. Thirdly, I was going to meet my new IGP, who I had had, whom I had met in a short stint at Makere University, you may not remember, with my classmate at that time of political science, who is now a lieutenant colonel in the UPDF, is called Lieutenant Colonel John Wadham. Oh, yes. Near CCE. As we plan to join the army after university. I was putting on a t-shirt with a picture and the name of Chekova. <laughs> you two were donning a white t-shirt. You say, oh, Che, he was a great freedom fighter. The rest is history, as I later joined School of Political Education Changwanzi and joined Kabamba military training. After short stint as a lecturer, I joined police as a cadet in 1989. A journey mostly in community policing and CPC and Interpol. I say this because when we introduced, when we introduced ourselves, and then I introduced myself, as a commissioner for community affairs, you remark, oh, it's you, Cassini. I look forward to working with you. I hope you remember. This energized me, though many saw you as a O O, any other object. I saw optimism. Though I later went to the U.S. for another community policing course and returning in February 2006, you summoned me after an urgent meeting in Nakasero and later I went with you to a place called Chilianga, South County. This is in Cuba, in a military helicopter. And you tested me as a community led sting operation against murders that erupted after the election that pitted Honorable Bessis and Honorable Chinkas. Keep in mind, I never arrested until I completed the task in the local one. General, all these years, you have been a general, an IGP, a mentor, a parent. You don't want to be called a friend, I know, because you said no friend. Comrade. We are comrades. <laughs> comrade. But us. And most of us who are seated here, you were afraid. You mentored us and all my colleagues here into the general we are. And I can assure you, none was putting on this rank when you came. None. All the ranks of AGPs we got when you became Inspector General of Police. We are confident because of you. Leadership styles differ, but you, um, we, but you move the us into the general that we are. You looked after our families, and I'm speaking for all the officers and men of the Uganda police. Personally, my son would have died if it wasn't. And so I speak on behalf of many officers whose lives and families you touched. You touched us, and your tasks were loud and clear, often applauding those who achieved, correcting those who didn't. You didn't even fear to step on the toes of those who were dragging their feet. You built a cohesive force. Leave us with the security agencies, other security agencies. You brought us non and non human and non human resources, welfare, training. You opened for us. Uh, you remember, sir, one time you went and talked to the women. I think it was in Chibudi. I don't know whether you remember the tears. The day you go, they have already formed themselves into an association, international, international Association of Women Police. And that confidence was because of you. And we want to applaud you. You made us sit, you made us sit.
feet shoulder to shoulder with colleagues in the military. You delegated many of us meet very important delegation, including HE the president. You were never selfish. You would send us to go and meet, welcome him at the airport, see him off as he was going to a state of, uh, state of uh, duties outside the country. I know we are known to him by name, by face. You weren't selfish. You linked us with the regional police as you envisioned a country where security rested on cooperation and coordination with other countries, <coughs> IAPCO, AFRICO, and global policing, the international policy. You now work in any country, in IAPCO, in Africa, and we are known by name and by rank. Your effort in building the formed police unit in Somalia must never be forgotten. I remember I went there with the Mojira, we seated there for the first time, and we were wondering whether we would even last a day. How many years? God knows. You mingled with the civilian population and taught us the strength of policing, that the strength of policing lies with the general population. You ate, slept with the rank and file, but also with the lowest man in this country. I can't exhaust everything here. Allow me to say how pleased we are that you mentored and left, uh, and left no doubt in, his, in, in, the, in the head of state that our current IGP would take over from you. It could have been any of us. Yes, I mean it. It could have been any of us. Why? Because all of us were there for this process. IGP Ochora, we know you will finish General Kare's vision of building and enlightening, motivated, community oriented, accountable, and modern police force geared towards the current free society. For the new DIG, we love you. Some of us have worked with you. We are happy to have come. We shall work with you. We pledge our support to work with you. General we request you to thank your lovely wife and your Nobody talked about that. I'm the first one to talk about it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we want you to thank her for her humility. She respected us. Nobody ever had a word from her. Nobody. One time, you may, you may remember, she worked for us Mandela. When we met every day at 4 a.m. on the parliamentary avenue, where police oh, yes. us away. And you carried it yourself every day. She did that until when we can, You can remember you might. <laughs> for us who traveled with you, you, for us who traveled with you and her, what a gem she is. We thank you for the family that left your absence during service this country with the police. We can only pledge to work even more harder. I know a lot has been said and a lot is being said to alienate you from us. But we trust you because you know us and you know what we are capable of doing or saying and what we are not capable of doing or saying. Thank you. Wherever you go, we are ready to rub shoulders again as we serve this country. Why did Masaka recently, in the morning of Monday, I placed a call to you, and you said, Comrade, do not be faced. We must fight crime in this country. It is not about me. It is about our country. Those are the words he said to me in the morning of Monday, after the changes of Sunday in the evening. I leave you because I'm a Christian and I'm a believer. I leave you here, chapter 6, verse 10. And this is what I said, I quote, For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him 
and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. I request, end of quote, that's what it says. I request that when we finally put up a police museum, your statue should be placed in a corner of a, 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 a corner of fame for what you did, among other people, of course. Please accept to join us as we celebrate important occasions because I was with you and I know how you treasured whenever you looked around and you saw your former IGPs yes, at yes, yes. How gratified we shall be when you come and join us to see the vision you had for the police to continue. General Kare, thank you so much for helping us, especially me. May God bless you. I can have a copy of your speech. <laughs> <laughs> I want to frame it. <laughs> Very touching. I'm going to end it. Thank you very much. So good. I'm going to do what? You did. You have said it. So now I'm going to write a piece. Thank you, Honorable Minister of Internal Affairs, the Honorable Minister of State, the outgoing IGP, the incoming IGP, and the new Deputy IGP, top leaders of the Uganda Police Department, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Agure Muni, I'm the Under Secretary of Minister of Internal Affairs but I'm representing the Permanent Secretary, Dr. Benon Mutambi, who is not with us here. He's out on other official engagements. I know we are racing against time, so I'll be very brief. And I don't want to risk eulogizing the outgoing IGP, because I have a lot of respect for him. I just want to say a few things that um, connects the ministry with the Uganda Police Force for the starters. The Uganda Police Force is a department under the Ministry of Internal Affairs, like prison, the government are talking about it, Directorate of Immigration, uh, National Identification and Registration Authority. But the mission of the ministry is derived from the mandate of the police. That is a, a peaceful, safe, and stable Uganda. Meaning that if the ministry is to achieve its mandate, the Uganda Police Force is at the forefront. So we cherish this force. I would like to congratulate uh, the outgoing IGP for grooming a successor. That is performance for management and succession management. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah. And also congratulate uh, DIGP Ochola for the confidence that HE has had in him and his new deputy. And uh, we wish that you will do the best that you expect. IGP, uh, sorry, IGP Kare Kaihura, who took over the KK symbol from uh, Chirunda Chivejinja, was a very selfless person. One time we wanted to pass over the, to need to pass out the immigration officers whom we are trained in Butiawa. And we got stuck somewhere with the protocol. So I had to call him one evening, but I needed him the, sec uh, the following day to go to Butiava, and he said, yes, I'll be there. And indeed, so we were there to pass out, if you remember the immigration <laughs> officers that we have. There are many things that you have achieved during your tenure, and uh, for me, I take it that you've increased the presence of the police up to the sub county level now. Since the, uh, you took, the Uganda police took over the local administration police, we have seen increased visibility, and I, I want to commend you for that, among so many other achievements that you enumerated. Uh, the Minister of Internal Affairs uh, plays a policy and coordination role. We appreciate the challenges you have highlighted, among which is the budget and the other constraints, and uh, the whole ministers are already in the process of engaging other stakeholders to make sure the budget of Uganda police is not touched. Today, in the afternoon, the Honourable Minister will be laying before Parliament the budget estimates for the next financial year, and they, I think something will be achieved there because we have already made efforts. And we shall continue to play that role of policy guidance and support. We also want to see the new leadership working closely with the Ministry, as you know, and we shall give all the support. Um, 
I just want to uh, enjoy the new leadership to continue improving the image of the Uganda Police Force so that we don't have distorted information about this and that. You could have seen the headlines of today. Uh, red paper saying Kaihura to quit Uganda. <laughs> that is a, is a problem. But we can work on the image. <laughs> the the I didn't read is there somebody from Red Paper here? What reason is So um I want to thank you very much. I know in the interest of time. Uh, I just wish to now take this opportunity to invite the Honor Minister of State to make his remarks and then invite the whole the Honor Minister of Internal Affairs. Thank you very much. <laughs> Honor Minister, I thought these issues of general should be left to general. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Honourable Minister, for this opportunity to just make, I think, more personal comment than the official position which you should be able to put. Uh, when I started working, and this was some time back, I used to report to work at 7 a.m. and leave at 8 p.m. And then my supervisor then, who is still, who is a senior person in government now, and I will not mention, asked me why I wanted to finish government job. <laughs> uh, I asked him, what, what does he mean? He says, no, you do your part. It's like a dance ground. You leave the rest to other people. And many times when we are doing it, people don't notice the good. You know, there is a, a big religion called the, the Christian religion. And this was started by a man called Christ, or a son of God called Christ. And they crucified him. But today, so general, <laughs> you have done your part and you should be satisfied. And I am sure that the appointed authority will find it befitting to type in your services at a personal level, in the ministry. I think I've noticed what you have done for this minister, for this police. If I were you, I would not dwell on the weaknesses. And I would dwell more on my conscience of contribution. So I want to thank you, thank you sir. for the service you have rendered to Uganda. Thank you, sir. There's another general, uh, Inspector General, <laughs> now of police, uh, Martin, and your colleague, Brigadier General, again another general. <laughs> I want to congratulate you for the appointment. You, have a, you had an opportunity to serve under Kale. I'm sure what you know what you are set to do. You have additional ideas, and you'll be able to do a better job. To add on it, so that we don't finish the work he has, he has done, but we continue yes. adding on it. The only challenge you have is there is a book called The Great Expectations. Mm. I don't know whether you have read it. It's by somebody, Jesus. Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens? Mm. Yes. yes, The Great Expectations. You 
see, the great expectation in the country now is that uh, uh, the new IGP is coming to do miracles. So that is the great expectation. I think that's your biggest challenge. But count us with you. We shall be there. We face the challenge now, a small, humble way. We shall give you our contribution and support. Thank you very much. Uh, is it me? Yes. No, no. It is you. May I now call upon my senior colleague, another general, Honorable General JJ Odongo, to make the comments. But perhaps before I do, it has also been a pleasant opportunity to serve with him. Yes. You know, we're in the same university, same year, same hall, yes, same Which hall. hall. Which one? And Which this one? was my minister <laughs> for Kabinda. No, no, no. But you know, there's only one patriotic hall. <laughs> <laughs> he was my minister for culture. Well, I was in the same uh, hall with the IGP. Yes. No school. The only hall. Ah. And the government is the And the government is coming the hall. So may I call upon you on our board? Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. If you don't mind, may I stand, please? Thank you. My colleague, the Minister of State, my brother, the outgoing Inspector General of Police, the incoming Inspector General and your Deputy, Permanent Secretary's Representative, Senior Officers from the Police Force, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, good morning all of you. Oh, is it already good afternoon? Good morning. <laughs> good morning. You know, I, first of all, I want to say I envy General Kare. For one week now, he has been the news consistently. Ask yourself, can you also make news for one week continuously? <laughs> So, real, I must say, General Kale, that aside, there is no doubt in my mind, as indeed colleagues have mentioned before me, that you have added value to the police force, both quantitatively as well as qualitatively. You remember when I was appointed Minister of Internal Affairs, I asked you to come and interact with me in my office. And the first thing I told you, if you will recollect, was that people will say what they say, but I want to tell you what I say. And I say, I am one of the few people who recognize your contribution in building the police force. I am repeating that today. Indeed, as colleagues have pointed out, if we measure quantitatively some of the things which you mentioned already, is the growth in the size of the police force from a minuscule 14,000 to now 42,000. That did not come by accident. It was a deliberate action, planning, and foresight on your part. You have also mentioned the growth of the budget of the police force. I have no doubt in my mind that you contributed by force of argument in the build-up of the police budget. Physically, we can see structures we can see fleets. That is no mean achievement. Obviously, 
people will say, no, he did not do it alone. But I do recognize that you are the driver of the team. Many people may not quite easily understand the qualitative difference that you brought into the police force. I will not repeat what my colleagues have said in terms of ideological reorientation of the police force. There is always the mundane task of management, preparing the systems, organizing the documents that guide the force. Today, as you are handing over, you have actually been able to hand over some of these documents. Not long ago in this country, we did not think that in government we needed to prepare plans, strategic plans. Now it is a routine matter. And I want, for example, for the police force to, to thank you for introducing uh, that concept of management through plans, management through strategic thinking. Quite often, as you did mention, we are faced with resource challenges. There is so much we want to do, but there is so little available to us. But during your tenure, that did not stop you because, unlike many of us, you thought outside the box in looking for solutions for some of these teething problems that the institution, that, that the force has been facing. So really, I want to thank you for that contribution, both quantitatively as well as qualitatively. Many of you may not know, but I will take this, this type opportunity to inform you. My wife is an Indian, so in, through her, I've learned a few phrases in Gujarati. So today I want to tell you something in Gujarati. <laughs> but this Gujarati is strange in the sense that one of you, I think, is, IGP or Jom will understand this Gujarati. <laughs> In this Gujarati, what my wife has told me says, Mami Ruto Ramogit. Mami Ruto Ramogit. Mami Ruto Literally, it, 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 literally, it means, it, it, I, I come from Soroti, and those people in their homesteads used to have guards. Mm. You come from Gujarat, sir. <laughs> <laughs> they, they used to have guards, and the plant which produces guards is Amogate. Amogate. Now, the logic is, when you leave your homestead to go to a new one, what sometimes sprouts in the old homestead is amugit, mm. this plant which gives words. Mm. Now, if you are also migrating and you uproot it, you may not come to find the words yeah, later on. Yeah. The point I'm making is, you are around the corner. Do not abandon us. No, no. Be part of us. Continue to interact with us and be part and parcel of the challenges that we will continue to face. To the new team, first and foremost, I want to take this opportunity to thank His Excellency for the strategic thought in thinking that at this particular time we need an injection of a new management team in order to continue 
the journey of the police force. So I want to really congratulate you for catching His Excellency's eye and indeed being appointed to the positions that you've been brought into. But as you come in, there are two things that are really, I would say, define your challenge. The first one is the negative image that the police has acquired over the last so many weeks. The question is, what are we going to do? Because it is a fact. We cannot wish it away. It may be fabricated, but it is with us. So what do we do? That is one of the things I see as you take office as one of your biggest, biggest challenges. To turn around. As I told you during the police council, one of the ways in which you can turn it round is to look into yourselves. Could we maybe have contributed in this image? And if we did, how? So what must we therefore do? I believe that your actions will be a much more surer way of taking away this bad image. There are, of course, other actions that my brother Kasinje will certainly be involved in as the CPC. The second major challenge which I see you going to contend with is what the outgoing Inspector General of Police has pointed out, the spike in the crime rate. The various incidents of crime, and I must say sometimes high profile incidents, have really painted a gloom picture. I have always argued, and I'd like to repeat it here. That crime is a function of our society. It does not happen in isolation. It's my brother, my father, my uncle, your uncle, your sister, <coughs> who has perpetrated a crime. Therefore, what does that mean? For me, it is always important to understand the root causes. And that means understanding the objective conditions of our society. What is it in our communities, what is it in our societies that permits, for lack of a better word, crime to incubate and therefore crime to be perpetrated? It is important for us to understand the socio-economic conditions within the societies in which we live. Because invariably, apart from a few isolated cases, those involved in crime are doing so not out of a choice. There are a few cases, but the greater majority are doing so not out of choice. So what is it? 
The second thing I would like you to look at, but particularly within the community policing philosophy, is 